Hey guys, so this is What If Deku was, well, you read the title, if you didn't, this is What If Deku was Superman's son. Now, by the time this comes out, um, part 2 to What If Deku was Todoroki slash Iceman will already be uploaded. So basically guys, I recording this video right like seconds after I uploaded that video. So, yeah guys, so basically, um, Deku will be... Well, Superman's son. Now, basically, let's dive in onto Superman's side of the story. Now, Superman is still... Now, Krypton and DC heroes still do exist. Now, pretty much Quirks were pretty much, um... About five years of deck of Superman being Superman, that's when Quirks started to appear in the world. Now, basically, guys, um... Uh, Superman is actually the very first hero. Now, basically, um... Five years before Quirks became a normal thing. Not five years, not before, not five years before the first person ever that had a quirk. I mean, five years before Quirks started be to become, you know, more normal into the world. Now, basically, Superman was about, mm, let's say, thirty when he met Ochaku. Now, bas I mean, when he met Inko. When he met Inko, you know, Superman fell in love. Now, Superman, you know, started dating Inko, and everybody knew Superman's identity, Clark Kent. And, you know, people knew Superman because, you know, he was the first vigilante, but then he was, then he, you know, signed up to be a legal hero. Now, basically, Superman, you know, basically, well, fell in love with Inko. Two month, two, uh, no, five years after Inko and, you know, Superman started dating, they got married. And two years after that, Deku was born. So, basically, Deku was born, you know half Kryptonian, like Superboy. So basically, Deku will have all the powers of Superman, but for now, Deku will slowly get his powers. Now, basically, Deku's father knew for a fact that Deku will eventually get Kryptonian abilities, and Deku's father even speculated that he'll be stronger than De than him because he would be born under a yellow sun. So basically, you know, Deku was born into the, Inc the Midoriya family, but Deku's real name or biological name is, you know, Kael. 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 Whatever. So basically, Deku. Deku's, um, first name is actually still Zuku, but Deku's last name is Kael. Pretty much the last name or the first name, don't know, of Superman. So basically, um, Deku has. His last name is a Kryptonian name, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So basically, Deku, you know. Has a pretty weird name, but yet again, he is proud of his, you know, lineage. So basically, for a long fact for the government, people people just thought Superman was the first court person. So when they found out, so pretty much, you know, no, they didn't. They thought, you know, he was one of the strongest court person. Now basically, um, it's going to be different roles of pro heroes. Now, the number zero hero is actually the number one hero in Vacillation. The number one hero is still going to be All Might, but the number zero hero is going to be Superman. And basically, they gave the number zero hero spot. It's basically for heroes that can't be measured by, you know, how how strong they are because they're so strong and so, you know, brave and courageous and pretty much the best heroes ever. So, pretty much in uh, all theory, All Might is actually the number two hero and Endeavor is number three hero, but whatever. So, pretty much that's how the ranking happens in this universe. So, Superman is the number zero hero, and he's basically the strongest hero out there. So, basically, him and De him, All Might and Superman has have, you know, team-ups in the past and became best of friends. Even making, you know, All Might his best, his best, you know, man in his wedding. So, basically, All Might did train Deku when he was about 13, but we'll get into that later. So, basically, Superman, you know, trained Deku from a young age... To try to control his rage, so when he gets his powers, he doesn't, you know, go berserk. So basically, Deku was born in a ver in a mansion around Japan. Now this mansion was, you know, bought by, you know, because the number zero hero gets paid a lot more than number one hero gets paid about, uh, like a bunch of money, pretty much making Superman richer than Bruce Wayne, Tony Stark, 
and Lex Luthor combined, making him the richest man in the universe or the world. So basically, Superman, you know, had a huge mansion. I'll show you how the mansion looks like at the end of the what if. But yeah, so basically, you know, Superman goes to what's it called? Goes to you know Japan, pretty much making a huge, you know, uh, a huge impression on Japan, America, uh, Germany. Pretty much, Superman goes to every part of America or every part of the world. Basically, making himself known. Superman, at this point, has made himself known to become, you know, the most... Pretty much making him the actual symbol of hope. You know, All Might is the, is the second symbol of hope. But, yet again, you know, Superman is still the real, you know, main person that symbolizes hope in this universe. So, Deku, everybody knows about, you know, Deku's son. Well, everybody that goes to Deku's school. Now, Blakugo actually really already had his respect for Deku because everybody in his school knew that Deku would get a strong quirk because his father is a number zero hero. Or I might say zero, a number zero hero. So basically, Deku was praised as a kid because everybody knew that Deku was eventually going to get a very powerful quirk. Now, basically, Deku, Deku's powers activated one day, one seemingly weird day. Now, basically, Deku's powers didn't activate when he was, you know, about, when Deku was about 10 years old, about a couple of years after, you know, Bakugo got his quirk, Bakugo thought Deku was just a late bloomer, that's what Deku told him, because Deku's dad always told Deku that he would get a power, even at a young age, he said, one day you'll have immense power, like me. Basically, when that day comes, come to me, son, as fast as you can, and I'll train you. So basically, Deku, you know, pretty much being 10 years old and Bakugo being 10 years old as well, they pretty much walk, you know, they become, they still are friends, but Bakugo, you know, still feels like he's, well, has a cockiness to him, making him feel like, he, that deep down inside, that he's better than Deku. Pretty much, you know, still being cocky towards Deku and calling him a nerd. Because Deku is very smart, kind of like how Superman is smart. So, you know... Deku is pretty smart. Deku also has a natural toned body. Basically, Deku has the same body that he had during the 10 month art training by the time he's 16 without any training. So, basically, Deku, you know, we skip a couple of years and Deku still hasn't had his powers and Deku's about 13. So, basically, Deku, you know, and Bakugo pretty much in school and Deku, you know, starts getting bullied like he's quirk loose. Deku still keeps on getting bullied and all that other stuff. He's he's him. Bullied, bullied, isn't called a nerd or said to, you know, kill himself. Basically, they just bully him because, you know, they feel like he's quirkless and his father hates him. So, basically, Deku, you know, feels like everything in the world's going down. But one day, when Bakugo and his goons try to bully Deku, De something happens. They try to bully Deku and... And Deku, um, I should tell you how Deku looks. Now, Deku has a, you know, fetish with, um, Superman merch. And Deku gets all, every single bit of Superman merch, because Deku's father knows that he loves, you know, Superman merch. So Deku's father brings Deku merch and action figures, like, pretty much every day. Deku is still into action figures because, you know, he's a nerd. Basically, Deku, you know, pretty much is really, you know, interested in... Hero merch. Deku has all sorts of All my hoodies and posters, and especially has more Superman merch than All Might merch all together. Now, basically, Deku wears this Superman hoodie and ripped up jeans and red shoes, like in canon. Now, these red shoes are Deku's red shoes, but yeah. Now, I should explain how Deku looks genetically and how he looks, you know, in the face. Now, Deku has, still has green eyes, but Deku has black hair, and Deku has, um, yeah, Deku has green eyes and black hair, so that's the only thing I really changed about Deku's looks. <laughs> now, Deku doesn't have freckles, so that's a pretty, you know, a pretty drastic change from Deku's design. So, yeah. So, basically, Deku, you know, pretty much goes through life. Getting bullied. Now, when he's getting bullied by Bakugo this one time, his powers actually do activate. Deku starts, you know, getting pummeled and beat up by Deku. I mean, Bakugo. Bakugo throws an explosion at Deku. And Deku catches his hand, pretty much stopping the explosion in thin air. 
Deku looks at him and says, awesome, and his eyes glow red. Pretty much grabbing and squeezing tighter on Bakugo's wrist, breaking Bakugo's wrist, completely throwing Bakugo into a wall, making a crater, throwing him through the building. Deku looks at his goons, and his goons cower in fear, and Deku flicks them upside the head, seeing them flying a couple feet away. Now, basically, Deku sees it as awesome, and looks at his hands like he's, you know, a god. And basically, Deku jumps up, but nothing really happens. Now, Deku notices that he only has super strength, so Deku starts running off. Deku's running, 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 and Deku notices that everything around him starts slowing down. Now, Deku's father did explain his powers to Deku at a young age, so Deku knew, so Deku would know what's going on when he gets his powers. So Deku starts running and sees that everything around him is slowing down. The cars, the people, the birds, the chirping, everything's slowing down. Pretty much Deku, like, flash type of speed. Deku has super speed like, you know, Superman. So Deku starts running around, seeing that everything's slowing down while he's running, making him incredibly fast. Deku either takes a, you know, goes through a little bit of a stop towards the ice cream, the ice cream shop, grabbing, you know, ice cream and pretty much leaving cash on the table and running off. So Deku, you know, eats his ice cream pretty fast and eventually he gets to his mansion or his house near Japan. And Deku runs there and runs into the house. See that Inko is, you know, on the couch, pretty much, you know, doing some bills. Now, basically, Inko doesn't really have to work because, you know, her, you know, husband is loaded. And also, they already have enough money in their account, so Inko doesn't have to work. Now, pretty much, Inko is working, and she hears a huge wisp of wind, or feels it, and looks up and sees Deku standing over her on the desk. Inko tells, us, tells you know, Deku to get off the desk, yelling at him, and Deku jumps off the desk and says, I have my quirk, I have my powers. D Inko, you know, gets a pretty, you know, shocked impression on, his, on her face and gets really, you know, excited. He say, oh, we should call your father. They call Deku, they call Superman, or, you know, Clark, and pretty much Superman shows up. They show Deku's father, and Deku's father shows up. Deku's father looks at Deku, and say what's the problem? And Deku shows Deku. Deku shows um, his father's, you know, he, Deku shows his father his powers. Sorry guys. And pretty much he throws, you know, a tree around in their mansion, a couple of feet out of the, you know, pretty much area they own. Pretty much you know throwing it pretty far. Clark or Superman gets really excited and says you have powers and pretty much picks up Deku saying that. You're finally going to be able to become a real hero. I was waiting for this day for years. Pretty much Deku, you know, starts getting trained immediately, getting trained about his powers. Now, for now, the only power Deku doesn't have mastery of is flight, and Deku doesn't have his ice breath yet. Now, Deku doesn't have his ice breath, but Deku can, you know, make many tornadoes in his mouth. Or pretty much something like Deku can, you know, shoot a pretty pretty strong wisp of air, but not enough to make ice. So, for Deku's flight, Deku can only super jump, so the only way Deku can get into a situation, or out of a situation, or get to a situation, ha Deku has to use a super speed, or a super jump there. So that's the only way Deku can get to area to area, super way. So basically, Deku, you know, develops all of his powers, having invulnerability, super strength, and all other sorts of stuff. So, Deku, you know, Pretty much is told by his father that, you know, you're gonna be a great hero. And pretty much gonna you know, train Deku in the combat and you know training. Now Deku already has a pre toned body naturally, so all my Deku didn't have to be trained that much on his physical body. Now Deku if Deku was ever exposed to Kryptonite, Deku would be able to fend for himself because Deku would be half Kryptonian of uh, Deku would be half um Kryptonian, Deku would still be weakened by Kryptonite, but not as much as you know, uh, Clark Kent, or, you know, Superman. So, Deku will still be able to fight, like, an average Joe if he was exposed to Kryptonite. So, he wouldn't be completely hopeless like Superman. So, basically, Deku, you know, Deku was exposed to Kryptonite once by when he was 16, before, you know, his last day of Yue. Or, last day of, um, of his school, where he goes with Bakugo. So, basically, Bakugo hasn't, wasn't told by Deku yet about his abilities, and pretty much, you know, De Bakugo didn't know he had abilities, but he just wanted to know if Deku told him. And Deku never told him because, you know, he already knew Deku knew, Bakugo knew. So Bakugo, you know, 
he pretty much never got mad. Will never get mad because you know he already knows Deku has superpowers. So basically, you know, Deku, you know, has all this power. Deku's exposed to Kryptonite once, finding a little piece of Kryptonite in the mountains where his, you know, mansion or his, you know, property is. So basically, De basically Deku is running around the mountains where his property owns. The mountains his property owns, and pretty much you know running around, jumping and fl and almost trying to fly. Now Deku can hover, but he can't really fly. Deku's trying to fly, but eventually he crashes into a couple of pieces of rubble, and he grabs one of the rubble. But he feels a lot of pain through his body, and he feels so weak. He falls into the ground, and pretty much can't get up. Deku looks around, and he sees a green, glowing rock. Deku was ex Deku already knows his kryptonite because. He was, you know, pretty much Deku's father told him what Kryptonite looked like and what it would do to you. So basically, Deku starts, you know, claw clawing away. Eventually, when he gets a pretty good, you know, feet away, he super jumps to the property or to home and pretty much tells his father or his mother about it. His father goes up there, grabs, you know, a couple of plier pliers or whatever, and pretty much tells, you know, Inko to put it into a lead case, pretty much locking it. You know, into the lead case, pretty much putting it into the vault of kryptonite that Superman has in his, you know, pretty much, what you want to call it, in his which, uh, fortress of solitude. Now his fortress of solitude is actually, you know, still in the North Pole or the Winter. I don't know where it is. The North Pole, the South Pole, don't know. So basically, you know, Deku is took is taken to the, you know, the Fortress of Solitude later on in the what if, but for now Deku hasn't went to the Fortress of Solitude yet. Now basically Deku, you know, goes to goes to um the entry exam because the last day of UA, Deku actually starts getting homeschooled by his father because Deku doesn't Deku doesn't want you know Deku's father doesn't want Deku to you know accidentally use his X-ray vision or have a burst of energy or power in the middle of class and kill everybody in his classroom. So basically. You know, pretty much Superman homeschools Deku for the remainder of the rest of his life after he gets his powers. Now, Deku doesn't mind this because all he has to do is wake up, do some, you know, mathematical equations, and do some testing. Because Deku's mother is actually, was an actual um, astrophysicist before she married, you know, Superman, before she stopped working. So she knew a lot about her, you know, education and, you know, teach Deku. Deku basically was really smart, about 10 times smarter than Bakugo could ever be, pretty much, you know, being incredibly smart, almost as smart as an average hero, smarter than them. So, Deku was incredibly, you know, skilled, and, you know, blessed with knowledge. Now, Deku went to the entry exams, and, well, didn't really go to the entry exams, Deku got a recommendation from his father. Now, Deku got a recommendation by his father, and pretty much went to UA without doing the entry exam. Now, Deku goes to the entry exam, and pretty much, you know, doesn't really go there. Sorry, guys. I did this with no script. I'm basically just taking this off the roll of my tongue. So, yeah. So, basically, Deku goes to UA and walks into Class 1A. Deku walks into Class 1A, walking in there, seeing that, you know, there's a couple other students in here, pretty much walking into class. Now Superman is going to be having a couple of classes with the a couple of classes with the students, all that other stuff. Now basically Deku, you know, pretty much So guys, basically Deku So guys, basically Deku goes, you know, in the class 1A and eventually Azal walks in the class 1A, explaining to the class are doing quirk assessments. Before that happens, Deku actually gets crowded by a bunch of girls. Because, you know, Deku is the son of Superman. Everybody really, everybody knows that because they were told, um, or, you know, they knew. Because they knew a certain name, Clark Kent, a, a kid under the name of Clark Kent, was going to UA. And they put it together and found out, you know, Superman's son was going to UA. Obviously, everybody knew that. Because, you know, he's the son of Superman. He's obviously going to go to UA. So, basically, Deku, you know... Looks at everybody and pretty much they start asking Deku's question, questions about him and also his father. Pretty much talking to him, trying to, you know, 
flirt with him and some of the kids or the, some of the girls trying to, you know, get his number. But eventually Azawa walks in class and explains to the class they're doing quirk assessments. They get ready and pretty much are told to go back, you know, to their seats and they get ready and get in their sports, you know, suits or, you know, their, their, um, gym, their gym clothes. So they get ready and pretty much Deku gets in his gym clothes and... Deku getting ready. So guys, basically, Deku, you know, going to UA. Uh, I mean, Deku getting into his sports hero costume, or so, you know, his gym clothes, and gets ready. So Deku t is told to throw the ball first, and Deku grabs the ball, chucking it out of the atmosphere, getting a, getting a, you know, a really good throw, getting infinity. For a long jump, Deku aces it, doing a super jump. The race, Deku aces it, and pretty much the grip, the grip, the grip test strength, Deku aces it. So in total, Deku gets first place. Todoroki gets second place, and Deku gets third. Uh, Bakugo gets third place. So Deku all together gets a pretty good score, awesome score. So the rest of the class they get the same score, but just lower down. And yeah. So guys, basically Deku, you know, um, is pretty much is, gets cried by the girls in class, pretty much getting told. Or, you know, asking Deku about his father and him and, you know, how sh how strong are you? Pretty much saying that you're really strong. And pretty much, you know, some of them saying that you do have a girlfriend. Pretty much, you know, just trying to get Deku, you know, to get interested in him. And pretty much Deku, you know, says back, please, I don't, I don't want... Pretty much Deku still has that Deku personality, but doesn't have that Deku, you know... Doesn't have that, you know, Deku pushover you know, type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, Deku was in a pushover, but yet again, he's still nice like Deku in canon. So, yeah. So, basically, you know, Bakugo scoffs at this and getting really mad that Deku's, you know, pretty much getting all this attention. Now, basically, Deku sees that, you know, Azawa tells some of the students out of here to get out because he was real, he was serious about the whole time, you know, thing with the expelling. Now, he did explain that, but I didn't say anything about it, because, you know, if you have seen UA, you already know what I'm talking about, or My Hero Academia. Sorry, guys. So, basically, um, Deku, you know, just to get, sees that, you know, or he uses his super hearing to see that Manetic is expelled, and that's pretty much it. Manetic is expelled from UA, and that's basically it. So, so guys, if you guys want Deku to be shipped with anybody from another class or another school you can decide who should replace Mineta. so yeah guys so guys it's been 2020 it's been 22 minutes so i guess yeah so guys i'm gonna leave it off here guys so part two will be coming um next saturday because that's the first day of spring break my guys now guys go down in the comments and tell me what are you gonna do for spring break so yeah guys I hope you guys enjoy the video, and see you guys later. And as always, have a blessed day.